Look at the crucifix. She held it up. She said, He loves you so much that even if you were the only person ever to be born, He would have still died on that cross for you personally. Our freedom, actually, is not in choosing what we want to do or be. There's no shortage of vocations. What there is a shortage of today is men and women saying yes to God. There's an old saying, you can run from God, but you can't escape. My name is Father Christopher Sarkis. I'm the parish priest of Our Lady Help of Christians Catholic Parish at Rose Meadow in the Diocese of Wollongong, New South Wales, Australia. I was born in uh, Wollongong on the south coast of New South Wales into a family of eight children. I'm the youngest of eight, six sisters and one brother. Our family was always a family of faith. Uh, I did my primary schooling in St. Joseph's Catholic Primary School at Bulleye, and then I went to a Catholic high school, St. Paul's, uh, run by the Marist fathers and brothers. As a child, I was an altar server, an altar boy. I think that had a great influence on my future priestly vocation. In school, we were very fortunate and blessed at that time uh, to have nuns teaching us in primary school and in high school, the priests and brothers. I remember it uh, for some reason clearly. You know how some things stay in your mind now, I remember sitting in the class and one of the sisters, our class teacher, uh, was telling us about how much God loves us. Now, I remember this was fourth class. And I have to be honest, I don't remember anything else that she said. But I remember this part. At the end of it, she said, Do you know how much God loves you? Look at the crucifix. She held it up. She said, He loves you so much that even if you were the only person ever to be born, He would have still died on that cross for you personally. Now, what are you going to do to return that love to Him? Now, I don't know why, but something in me at that stage, in fourth class, I would have been, what, probably nine, eight, nine. I have never forgotten it. And for some reason, from that point on, is when I trace my first thoughts of a priestly vocation. Now, I was also at that stage learning to be an altar boy. And I think um, 
being present at and serving at Mass was also a great influence. In growing up, I always remember that our faith, our Catholic faith, was an integral part of who we were and the people we were. And it formed us into the adults we become. So if I can jump a little ahead now and then come back to that influence. As I said, I have been a priest this year for 38 years. When I was ordained in 1985, the year before that I was in Unandera, then in Campbelltown for five years and then uh, at the cathedral for two years. When I was then asked to come here to Rose Meadow to begin this parish and to found it, basically. Over those years, I have often thought back to the early years of my childhood and family upbringing and the extraordinary journey that that has been. I am firmly of the belief that God calls each of us to a particular vocation in life. Whether that's the priestly or religious, marriage, single life, our freedom actually is not in choosing what we want to do or be, but in saying yes or no to what God has already planned for our life. One of the things we believe as Christians and as Catholics is that we have choice, we have free will, and that our whole life is precious and sacred to God. From the very moment of our conception, God sees the whole journey of our life before him. Our freedom is choosing to follow that journey. So, for example, when people say today there's a shortage of vocations, I always say, no, there's not. God could never go back on his word. There's no shortage of vocations. What there is a shortage of today is men and women saying yes to God, young men to priesthood, and men and women to consecrate a religious life. The other thing that is lacking today, I believe, is that permeation, that infusion of faith in the vocation of marriage and family life, because that's where all other vocations come from. Don't expect a blinding bolt from heaven. Sometimes I've spoken to young men and they've said, you know, Father, how do I know if I've got a vocation? There's been no great dramatic sign from God. I said, if you're waiting for one, you'll never get it. God speaks in silence, in quietness, and over time. So the influence of parents, of family daily prayer, of the atmosphere of the home. All these things influence how we listen to God speaking to us. So, the influence of family, of friends, but also of the parish. Today, we have huge numbers of non-practicing Catholics. Yet the influence from being present in the community of faith is one of the factors in determining how we discern our vocations. As a child, I was an altar boy. The influence that that had on me of simply being present in the sanctuary, 
of being around the priests at Mass, that spoke to me, together with that little anecdotal story of, of the sister, it made me ask questions, what am I going to do with my life? Now, I can honestly say that that feeling of attraction to priesthood never really left me. When I left school, I worked for a couple of years, but the, the, there was always that nagging question, when are you going to say yes? There's an old saying, you can run from God, but you can't escape. Finally, I said yes. The rest is history. Once I actually made the decision to enter the seminary, it was amazing how from that point on, everything seemed to just flow. I entered St. Patrick's Seminary in Manly on the 24th of February, 1979. It was the beginning of a seven-year journey of formation. Looking back on it now, I think it was probably the most important time, not so much in discerning my vocation, but in putting it into context, which would set me up, as it were, for how I would live my priesthood for the rest of my life. I remember preparing for the actual ordination and the, the feeling of, yes, this is what God has called me to, and the inner feeling of peace and of joy and of contentment. And I can honestly say I have never once regretted that decision. The journey of a priest just begins at ordination. When it came to my ordination, each priest chooses what we might call a motto or a verse from scripture that he prints on his ordination card. I chose the words of our Lord, his last words, know that I am with you always, yes, to the end of time. The reason I chose that is because through all of my life, I have felt Christ leading me, guiding me. And it was at once a prayer of thanks to him for that, but also a prayer of intercession and request that he would continue to guide me in my priesthood and in my priestly life and ministry. Looking back over the years of priesthood, and the various experiences, he has always been with me. And to anybody who was contemplating a religious priestly vocation, Christ will never leave you. Do not fear saying yes to Christ. Priesthood is a radical way of life, especially today, which is why so few say yes. But in saying yes, you receive an inner peace and a tranquility that you will find nowhere else. And that comes through to the people that you serve. In my priestly life, there have also been periods of Questioning, yes, but that has always been, in a sense, of practical matters. But spiritually, there has never been a question of, am I in the right life? Always yes. The other part of the priesthood is a devotion to Our Lady. She is the mother of priests. She will guide you 
as you minister to the people, but also help you lead them to Christ. Do whatever he tells you. Our Lady's words at Cana. She guides all, but especially priests, to help those entrusted to their care to Christ. I was ordained on the 30th of November, 1985, the Feast of St. Andrew. It was a most joyous day. I remember family, friends, fellow seminarians, priests, even sisters and brothers uh, who taught me at school uh, attended the ceremony. One of the things that stand out most in my memory of the ordination mass was when the bishop and all of the priests filed past and laid hands on my head. For me, that was a moment of profound holiness that they were welcoming me into the life of priesthood and that I would not be doing this alone, that I was part of a brotherhood that not only supports each other, but also gives a united witness. The Mass of Thanksgiving, which followed the next day, again, among the parishioners where I grew up at Bulai, the great feeling of joy and celebration that one of their own had become a priest. So once I was ordained, as I said, I was appointed to the parish of St. John's at Campbelltown, where I spent five years. Uh, then I went to the cathedral uh, for two years, and then I've been here at Rose Meadow since. One of the questions that I've often been asked is, are you happy as a priest? And I can honestly say, yes, I have never regretted the decision. Does that mean that being a happy as a priest means that you're always going around smiling and laughing and joking? No. One of the great mistakes people make today is thinking that being happy is the same as having fun. No. Being happy is being at peace with yourself. And that's what I find in my priesthood. Being a priest has fulfilled me. It is who I am. It is what I do. Prayer is at the centre of that. The most important relationship in my life is my relationship with Christ. As a diocesan priest, that is very much a personal relationship. Unlike priests who live in community and religious life, the Dawson priest has to pray alone more often than not. Yes, he celebrates Mass with his people, the sacraments, he goes into the schools, he even builds churches. But ultimately, a diocesan priest finds his purpose and meaning in his personal relationship with Christ. One of my major responsibilities when sent to Rose Meadow was to begin it as a parish in its own right. That was an enormous task, I have to say, and one of the questions I asked myself was, how was I going to be able to do this? Looking back now, I am convinced that if it was left to me, I wouldn't have been able to do it. It actually was Christ who was doing it through me with lots of help.
An essential part of that was providing a place for the community to worship God, to celebrate the sacraments. The church is more than a building. In the scriptures, we are told that the people are the living bricks of God's building. I very much look at this church building in that way. When we first started to talk about how to build it and what sort of a design that we wanted and what sort of a place it would be, the one thing I insisted on was that it be a place that as soon as you entered it, you felt the presence of God. That the very walls, the very tiles of the floor, the very ceiling would speak to us not of the material things that they were, but would lift our minds and heart to God. Because anybody who comes in here comes here not to admire a building, but to touch God, to touch Christ. It must be a place of prayer, of peace and of hope. The priest is the one who very much influences that. His very being, his very presence, the way he just is, either expresses Christ or it doesn't. He either attracts people to Christ or pushes them away. I see my life as a priest far more than what I do, but who I am who I represent. What I do is important. Visiting the sick, visiting the schools, being with people, counselling, preparing couples for marriage, baptising, administering to the sick and so on. But even more than that is who I am. My presence. And if a priest does not speak Christ's presence, then no matter what he does, he will be a failure. He may not have great talents or gifts, but he can bring Christ to people. To any young man who may be thinking about becoming a priest, the one most important piece of advice I would give you is this. Do you want to become a priest for yourself or for Christ? If it is for Christ, then follow it. And he will show you the way. Because being a priest is not being about yourself. It's being about Christ and being Christ's faithful servant. I often use the analogy, the priest must be like the pen in a person's hand. He must go where Christ sends him. He must do what Christ wants him to do. He must write, not his words, but the life of Christ. Earlier, I said that I chose for my motto when I was ordained, know that I am with you always, yes, to the end of time. In all of that journey of my own priestly life, Christ has been with me, has walked with me all days, and he will continue to walk with me until the end of time. Just as he will walk with his church and his people, until the end of time. He will never abandon us. God keeps his word. We may be unfaithful, but God is faithful. He cannot disown his own self. 
I am with you always, yes, to the end of time. May Christ walk with you always, and may you walk with him. God bless you. has a story of God's love to share. Shalom world, tune into God's love story.